Britain and Ireland. It's time to take part in the ultimate cooking competition. Turning up the heat. Two expert judges. Professional chef and baking queen, Lorraine Pascal. Don't let the smile fool you. I'll say it how it is. And international Michelin-starred chef, Jason Atherton. I take my food really seriously. And I'm looking for those home cooks who also share that same passion. And desperate to impress... 12 enthusiastic amateurs. It's gonna explode. Oh my God! Cooking in couples. We are best friends. We live together, we work together, we cook together. <laughs> We're neighbours. He's my hairdresser. It's region against region. Welcome to Scotland! Listen, we're Team Wales, right? We are the best. Woo! Oh, train okay. a bloke. First, they'll host super-sized dinner parties. Ah, they're not crispy. They're coming some sort of nightmare. To wow the judges. To me, the dish is a disappointment. Mm. And their rivals. I wish I hadn't eaten it, actually. Philip's got a game plan. You see it in his eyes. Before being pushed to their limits. <laughs> Your kitchens are parked behind you. <laughs> Cooking for crowds. <laughs> Never cooked this amount of people before. It's insane. And ultimately, they'll fight for survival. <laughs> in cook-offs against the clock. If you fail to deliver, you go to sudden death. Faster, mate. Faster, faster, faster. No, no, no. Partnerships will be pushed to breaking point. <laughs> <laughs> Just cut. Hideous. As the teams battle it out for a prize of £25,000. These guys may be home cooks now, but by the end of this competition, I'm expecting restaurant quality dishes. And to be crowned the champions of My Kitchen Rules. The competition is on. Previously on My Kitchen Rules, Hello, the teams headed for the great outdoors. Oh, it's a nice new barbecue. To cook up an alfresco lunch for 40 campers. Go on, you'll enjoy that. Emma and Philip. Oh, God. Cracked under the pressure. I've uh, messed up on the quail's heads, so I can't get them peeled. Oh, God. And Team Scotland. Alana and Catriana. Ah! Won the popular vote for the second time. As a team, we're pretty formidable. At Kitchen HQ, it was Wales. Don't say that with it, leave it. Versus the girls from the north. For the love of Pete, open up your bloody flower. But a fantastic fish dish. It was just a stellar dish. Kept Emma and Philip in the running. <sighs> and sent Gabby and Steph home. Now, just three teams remain to fight it out for a place in the My Kitchen Rules Grand Final. To get there, they face their biggest challenge so far. Welcome to the magnificent Grove House in London. This exclusive venue will be the backdrop to your next challenge. Tonight, Lorraine and myself are throwing a party for 30 very special guests, and we want you to cater for it. Wow, we've got to cook for these VIPs. It's a big ask, isn't it? Yes, yeah, right. Who on earth are these VIPs going to be? Celebrities, maybe? Chefs? Each team is required to create show-stopping food for our event tonight. That not only tastes good, but has a real sense of theatre. You need to deliver on the three T's. Taste, technique and theatricality. So think spectacular when designing your dishes. Oh, this is going to be a challenge. We are going to have to really step up today and perform. The winning team go straight through to the final. The two remaining teams will have to face each other in a sudden death cook-off. Good luck, teams. You will have four and a half hours in a professional kitchen to cook your dishes. Your time starts now. A professional kitchen is a whole different ball game. Oh, Thank you very much, young man. They're good home cooks, but I want to see these guys now produce professional standard party food. If we win this challenge today, we go straight through to the final. <laughs> it's not just the judges the teams need to impress. The mystery VIPs will also score their food. Jason Smith and Gordon Ramsay are three times. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. We can't do sandwiches. You know, it's sausage rolls and pork <laughs> pies, you know? <laughs> Yeah, what we got? The teams have four and a half hours to cook. Wow. Oysters. Oh, these are tiger prawns, Alana. Yeah. Mussels. Before returning to the party venue for finishing touches. Oh, wow. That is, that is a, a massive piece of ribeye. Emma, I've never, ever cooked a piece of beef this size before. First job, dream up their banquets. It's a saddle lamb, that, Kev. We've got to do 30 people, though. There may be a lot of work on your side if I'm going to be boning this out. 
Beautiful salmon. I've got the theme going on in my head. A bit of a surf, surf and turf. Surf and turf. Anna. Something along those lines. How are you? Team Wales, Emma and Philip are thinking right. big. Look at that. You have to be careful of the thrashes. So, guys, what are we cooking? Surf and turf. Not just any surf and turf, this is going to be spectacular. We've got the river beef as a centrepiece with it, with some salmon dressed with crabs, lobsters, lobsters. A lot of ice sculpture, oh. drama all across the table. Oh, I'm excited, I can't wait to see what you guys produce tonight. Right, Philip, you need to get me wrong with that one because yeah. we're going to run out of time. I'll be okay. Well, you've had 20 minutes now, nearly. Right. We all know that Emma is the leader in that kitchen, but when it came to the campsite challenge, Emma really crumbled. Oh my gosh, I've just got to take my lobsters out. Hey. Lobsters. If she crumbles again, with that amount of food to cook, Will Philip be able to take the slack? Well, I must get this up to a little bit hotter than. What the? Whole and we got a problem. When you need a hand, let me know on that. There we go. Just hope that holds now. Put in gently and slowly. Please don't fall. Thank you very much. Oh. So we'll just go for the ones that are absolutely the best. We can't serve a bearded mussel to Jason. Focusing solely on seafood, Team Scotland, Catriona and Alana. We're going to do a symphony of seafoods. Lobster, mussels, oysters, crab. Right, Alana, I'm just going to stick a couple of these managed big bugger crabs in. We want to make it simple, bite-sized portions, but really, wow. God, I've never made tartar sauce before, so here's hoping. There's no doubt that Alana and Catriona are fantastic home cooks, but I do worry that we haven't seen enough ambition. And ambition is what they're going to need to show to win this challenge. Their secret weapon, a retro classic. It's a long time since I've made smoked salmon mousse. I think it was actually for one of my kids' christenings before. <laughs> right, if my memory serves me right, what we need is lemons and sour cream. I think it's a lovely, lovely dish for a buffet. Probably. Quite an 80s dish, isn't it? Salmon mousse and the prawn cocktails. But then that food's all really trendy again. Actually, We've got to impress. Got to impress. Essex firefighters Danny and Kev are leading with lamb. It's all about the presentation, isn't it? Well, at the end of the day, Dan, that's the star of the show, isn't it? So we decided to do a smoked saddle of lamb, and then we're going to serve that with three types of beetroot. Kev, you're going to be making potato rosti. Mm. And I'm going to be making pea mousse and uh, beetroot meringue. Using liquid nitrogen, yep. so the theatrical side of it is going to be really good. Danny and Kev, they fought their battles every step of the way. A lot of those guys in there assume that they'd be gone by now. It's been amazing to watch their growth. Kev, I've filleted a couple of fishes before, yeah. and I've butterflied a leg of lamb, right. but I've never, ever deboned it. I've never done a saddle. I've never really eaten a saddle. They'll soon pick up on that if, if you haven't done it right, won't they? you got my back then, not, yeah? Not, not to yeah. put you under pressure, but yeah. you're doing a good oh. job. <laughs> They're doing something that they haven't actually done before. But they like being out of their comfort zone and they like being challenged. So this could be just up their street. If it takes me two and a half hours to do this lamb, that's what it's going to take me to do it. So I need Kevin to be, get as many processes done as we can. So we've still got some thumbs in the fridge, haven't we? I think we might have used them all. Did you use them? Oh, yes. I really wanted just to save some of the plums, Kev, to be honest. But, um, oh, sorry, mate, that's miscommunication. Yeah. Concentrate on what we're doing. Not a problem. We've still got that pea mousse. How long is that going to take, Kev? That's not going to take too long, is it? We ain't got long left, mate, so... Well, right, I'll get on with the pea mousse. Well, hurry up, then. Coming up... Hey, team! Oh, go on! On their way... Come on, Kev. Still got your rosties to do. 30 mystery VIPs. With this, Dan, it takes as long as it takes. It just feels like we haven't done anything. We might fail it. The three remaining teams are in professional kitchens. Well, I'm getting excited. I wonder who's coming. Trying to come up with the perfect party food for 30 mystery VIPs. If they're Jason and Lorraine's foodie friends, I'm going to be absolutely bricking it when I see them. <laughs> up for grabs, a place in the final. This is not about good home cooking anymore. The challenge is show-stopping food. They've got to make sure they show us the three teas. Taste. I'm going to add some brandy and then some white wine. Technique. I'm going to trim it all up. And then we put the stuff in the middle and theatre. Oh, we'll have the lobster and the crab shells, and then we'll just build it all around that. That is our main focal point. Mm. That's what we're looking for. But salmon's done. Hang on, hang on. Slowly. Team Wales, Emma and Philip, are aiming high with a supersized surf and turf. We had three teas given us by Jason. Taste was, was something we could do. One looks slightly overcooked. We can decorate it yeah, but artistically to cover it. You can't hide overcooked salmon. We decided that it had to be a fourth tea, and that was teamwork, because it was the only way we were going to get through the day successfully. I just had a bit of a disaster. What have you done? I've just put beast all over the kitchen. Don't look at the problem. What's the solution, love? It's not the time for those little things right now. For that. 
Why don't you get on? You either do the hollandaise or the frites. Let's get the frites. Let's get the frites. In that kitchen for Emma and Philip, there's a mountain of food. It looks like they're feeding an army. Got some prawns to go in in a minute. Okay. It's about quality, not quantity. We've done the beef. You're starting on the Bernays eggs. You've got 20 minutes for that, no pressure. We have to get one technical element out. Bernays egg is tarragon butter, moulded like a ball, and egg yolk in the middle. This is the pièce de résistance, darling. How's it going? How's it going? It's melting in my hand. Right, okay, I'll tell you what. You do this, I'll do that. Come on, they all know we're firemen. I think we need to do a bit of smoke, maybe a bit of flame. We'll smoke this, yeah? Also hoping to show off technical flair, Danny and Kev. I'm going to put 350 grams of peas in, in here. The pea mousse is a very technical recipe. A packet of peas into a Thermomix blender to get it a nice, smooth puree. They're going to be surprised it's so creamy and soft and that it's warm. And then add a product called Methacil. It's a form of gelatine, basically, and it'll make it into a mousse. How's it going, Kev? Yeah, we're getting there, mate. We're getting there. It's, you just can't rush it. It had to be done exactly right to exact measurements, otherwise it wouldn't work. Looking at this, Dan, I think I might have got the quantity wrong with that, mate. So I'm going to start that again. Come on, Kev. It's loads to do. Yeah, I know that, mate. Right, that's crabs for 20 minutes. Composing their seafood symphony. Oh, they're massive. Katriana and Alana. Now, this is, as I remember, the really absolutely bogging bit. With our instant restaurant, our seafood starter didn't go at all according to plan. So we wanted to show Jason Lorraine that we can actually do this. Yuck. I don't like the colour. I don't like the texture. And I don't actually like the smell. Oh. Hey, oh, team! Go off right! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, don't leave that. That's alright. How's it going? Oh, look, look at what we're doing. I've actually wow. bothered to go and get the crabs for you. Look at that crab meat. Look how beautiful and flaky that is. Look. I am so happy you ladies decided to do fresh crab after that stuff <laughs> you served your instant restaurant. Oh, stop it. The girls from Scotland, they're really starting to show off that they can actually properly cook. Now, they look like real contenders. Oh, okay, that's it, mate. That's the last of the lamb. Four saddles of lamb prepped and 50 minutes left before the teams must head back to the party venue. Still got your rush to do, Kev? Yes, mate. But the boys have a backlog. You've pureed it for about 15 minutes. You've got yeah. to force it for a sieve. Okay. As Kev is still elbow deep in pea mousse. I think it can't take that long to make the second batch. I just can't work it out. With this, Dan, it, it takes as long as it takes with this uh, mixture. I'm feeling the pressure all the time and even more intense because I'm seeing Dan running around thinking, hurry up, oh God, hurry up, please. So who prepared this lamb? Uh, I deboned it and uh, uh, got all the fat down, so... Have you done it before? I haven't, no. It's good to see you pushing yourselves. Deboning a saddle of lamb. Now, that's quite a skilled job to do, but you know what? It was clean, there wasn't too much meat left on the bone. He had done it as if he'd been doing it for years. How long have you been working on your peas? Quite, quite a while, actually. It's taken me longer than I thought it would do. I'm going to be doing this for another five or ten minutes, um, and then I will make another batch. OK. They are so up against it. Kev, with that pea puree, he's got enough to feed a small army. He needs to put the pea puree down and help Danny, because otherwise they're going to be in real trouble. Boom. That is going to be the start of the show. So get this on the hob now, and uh, we're going to start smoking it. These oysters are just so hard to open. Philip, I, I seriously think uh, we need to ditch the Bernays eggs. Decision is probably a good one to make. You're still doing the puree. Really ain't going to have time to make these rosters, mate. All right, I'll be with you in a couple of minutes, mate. It's just thickening up now, and I'll get it in. All right, mate. We've got all the sauces done, Alana. Yeah. OK. We've got enough for at least 40 or 50 portions. We've got enough to cover us. Time in the professional oh. kitchens is up. <laughs> right, come on, let's get everything to the boxes and go! I think we've put ourselves right deep in it, mate, to be honest. we just got to put it back. It just feels like we haven't done anything. We, we might fail here. At the party venue, the mystery VIPs are arriving. Wow, 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 wow. Each team needs to create a show-stopping banqueting table. The rib there, and the cut beef, because like, it's massive, yeah? Cocktails on here. Are the in? oysters going on there? No, the oysters are going on here, OK? Right, OK. Oh, thank God, they're last of it. For finishing touches, out the back, a cosy kitchen. Let me just come past you, I want to get another bowl. And Danny and Kev have some catching oh. up to do. We had four and a half hours in a professional kitchen, now we're in a broom cupboard with an oven and a couple of hobs. Come on. First thing first, we've got to sear this lamb. Oh, yes. Kev's going to start all the rosti. We'll go before in that pan as well. Yep. That's fell apart. Yeah, but you, you ain't cleaned the pan. I did. I cleaned the pan, but it's come up again. No, mate, don't give me a jibber-jabber. No, I ain't clean. All I kids, 
hear in the background was, was Danny and Kev making their rosties. I was thinking, oh, they're getting a bit stressy with each other. How's that look for you? Kev, it looks lovely, doesn't it? Come on, be confident in what you're doing, mate. I'm just checking, that's all. Yeah. Come on, you know that's what, the, what we want. For the other teams, it's on to final theatrical flourishes. Oh. Keep going, Em. This is the Murray Rose thickened with the xanthan gum, oh, right. which has then got laughing gas injected into it, which is going to make it like a nice bone. <laughs> Watching Emma work out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was brilliant. It smells a bit rough, that one. We decided that we'd do parsley, corals, sea sponges. Please work, please work, please work. We weren't giving the judges any excuse to pull us up. Yeah. They're nice and colourful, eh? I'm going to start bringing everything up. Crab on these. <laughs> you nearly wore it again. This is a party, so the food's got to be interesting, not only to taste. Delighted with that. But to look at, it's got to be really easy on the eye. Ah. It's just us, isn't it? It's just us. <laughs> right, OK, I'm just going to start making some of these beetroot meringues. In the liquid, in the liquid nitrogen. nitrogen. That's right, mate. Yeah? We had to go out there, plate a table up, and I just thought, you've left it too late. Come on, Kev, last minute, mate. OK, mate, you need the mooses out. Yeah, I'm getting them now. <gasps> oh! Whoa! Yeah, that's it's fab. Well done. put it around here, I think so. Our VIP guests are waiting. Go on, mate, keep going, Kev. That's quite a lot of stuff going on there. They're smoking with fire now, Dave. Don't set the alarms off. Three, two, one. That's it, time's up. Good job. That's awesome. Well done. Coming up... I don't believe it. ..the teams meet the mystery guests. Jason and I pulled off a good one. But whose banquet will impress? These guys can cook. They've thrown the kitchen sink at this. We just thought it was like a 1980s cruise ship. <laughs>
I think the lamb, full of flavour. Just in the background on your palate, you get this beautiful little smoked tea flavour. Yeah. Just yeah. at the end. I went too keen on the pea mash. The beetroot is actually quite nice and it adds a bit of a twist. So I went for the, uh, the really cold beetroot, that was absolutely lovely. There's a lot of skill, a lot of techniques here. There's a lot of cooking that's gone on. But maybe they could have filled the table up a little bit more. That was by far the hardest challenge we've ever faced, isn't it, really? But we, we got what we wanted out there and it tastes nice. All three banquets tasted. Unaware of who cooked what, friends and family mark each table out of ten. The scores will be revealed at Kitchen HQ tomorrow. But first... Because of all your hard work, our guests have asked to meet you to say thank you. Oh gosh, here we go, right? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Jason and Ryan pulled off a good one. You okay? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. It's just amazing. Just you can't beat that feeling. No, it's wonderful. Oh, you kept it secret, <laughs> right? <laughs> to serve that up to our families mm. was just better than serving up the VIPs. They are VIPs. <laughs> Kitchen headquarters. Time for the scores. We are feeling really nervous. If we could win this challenge and go through to the final, that would just be amazing. We've got our fingers and our toes crossed. I personally think we deserve to win it, hands down. The winning team will go straight through to the final. The other two teams will have to battle it out in the sudden death cook-off to join them. It's time for your scores. But on this challenge, it's not just our opinion that matters. Your friends and families have scored your dishes and they have been turned into an average mark out of 10. Alana and Katriana, our guests scored you a six out of 10. Philip and Emma, you received eight. Danny and Kev, a seven. After the guest scores, Team Wales are in the lead. Now, it's the judges' turn. We ask you to pay particular attention to the three T's. Taste, technique, and theatricality. Katriana, Alana, your seafood selection. You play to your strengths again, which is simplicity. Great ingredients, cooked really well, exactly what shellfish needs. And the crab, you taste what we tasted in Berwick to what we tasted there, it was just beautiful. The salmon mousse, maybe a tiny bit old fashioned, but what I loved is that you'd experimented with the sea sponges. That was something I'd not seen from you girls before. You know, sort of stepping outside your box a little bit and I really liked it. So, for your seafood selection, it could have been a little bit more show stopping for me. I'm gonna give you a seven out of 10. Thank you. Very good. I'm going to give you a score of eight out of ten. Oh, oh thank, thank you. you. That gives you a total score of 21. Thank, thank you. you. So, Philip and Emma, surf and turf. What a lot of food. Golly gosh. You must have worked really well together to get that amount of food out. That was the other tea, team one. It looked stunning. But I think because of the quantity of food you produce, you may have sacrificed a little bit on the quality. The salmon, a little bit overcooked. It was a little bit powdery on the palate. The prawn cocktails, I felt was a little bit greasy. So, I give you a seven. Thank you. I give you a seven. Thank you. That gives you a total of 22 putting you just ahead of Alana and Katriana. Which means Team Scotland will have to cook again. Danny and Kev, your smoked lamb. So when I looked at your table, there was a lot less on it. But there was actually more cooking, more technique. That lamb was just sensational. 
it was tender, it was tasty, it was well prepared. You're a natural. Seriously, Danny, you're a natural. Kev, did you dream of peas last night? Yeah, yeah. I made one batch. I uh, <laughs> thought it wouldn't be enough, and I thought, well, if it goes wrong, we have some spare. Spare? A bit of spare. <laughs> <laughs> but that hot pea mousse, it was bright, it tasted of really fresh peas, it was gorgeous. Thank you. The trio of beetroot was just fantastic. Even the beetroot liquid nitrogen thing was great. You know, these little beetroot rocks were fantastic. So, Danny and Kev, I give you a nine. It looked different and it looked original. I give you a nine out of ten, which gives you a total score of 25. You're in the final. Well done. <laughs> What more could you ask? Absolutely. Over the moon. So pleased. We've worked so hard and to be rewarded you know, yeah. with a shot in the final. Absolutely. Philip, Emma, Alana, Catriona, that means you will face each other in the sudden death cook-off. I'm massively disappointed. We didn't feel that we deserved to, to be doing this. No. Daunting, but there'd be something really, really satisfying about winning a cook-off against Emma and Philip. Today, you'll be cooking something very close to my heart. Dessert. In fact, you'll be cooking three of them. We want a top-notch trio of desserts, all cooked in two hours. Your time starts now. You could do your chocolate mousse. Mm -hmm. Vanilla, vanilla, I need vanilla pods. Can't find the vanilla pods. Blueberries. Shit, they've got to be in the fridge somewhere. Coming up, six desserts. This one seems to be split, and this one's one that's burnt. But only one place in the final. No pressure, huh? <laughs> Shall I do one? Philip really lost it. Kitchen HQ. Team Wales, Emma and Philip. We put our heart and soul into this. We want to carry on to win. A cooking against Team Scotland, okay. Catriona and Alana. Our presentation will be lovely and it'll look really attractive. To join Danny and Kev in the My Kitchen Rules final. I'm so relieved that I ain't left They still are up there, relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> they have two hours to make a sensational trio of desserts. I want to be wowed, I want to see something really, really different. The tricky thing for dessert, it's very scientific, it's very precise, there's very little margin for error. I'm just laying out the chocolate. Uh huh. Team Scotland's trio, chocolate mousse, Strawberry shortbread. Well, so far the shortbread is working out okay. Just a little bit fiddly. And a summer fruit pavlova. We need to get these meringues on, Catriona, don't we? Alana's the pavlova princess. Oh, oh no pressure, right? <laughs> My hands are shaking so much. A tree of desserts, because they're just small portions. They're fiddling individual and they're not how we normally cook. Oh, God, right. Calm down. So we are going to challenge ourselves by trying to do something... Something a bit more delicate than we would mm -hmm. normally do. Mm -hmm. Normally I would just do a big, huge one and just have it all spilling out. All right, I'm making the mousse now. Fill it. In the Welsh kitchen, Emma's taking charge of two of their three desserts. A raspberry mousse... I'm not sure if it's going to set or not. ...and a lemon creme brulee. This recipe is my dad's recipe, oh, yeah? so um, fingers crossed. I don't let him down, bless his soul. When making pastry. Everything's got to be precise. Philip's responsible for dessert number three. How's it going? It's going fine. A summer fruit frangipan tart. It's gone too lovely, love. What have you done? I don't know. Huh? It's fine. You've got the okay. sugar in, got the butter, got the flour. Put the sugar in you. Yeah. Put it like this. Put a little Cut bit of sugar. No, icing sugar. Yes, yeah, for yeah? me. Yeah. A little bit of icing sugar. Don't worry about it. Okay, I got All it. Right? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You have one and a half hours left. Right, Alana, this is starting to melt quite nicely. This is quite a critical part. We do want to make sure that we get this right. What you want to do is ensure that it's folded in rather than beaten in. I overworked the chocolate. Too much stirring. Stop stirring. Joanna, do you think that's, do you think that, that is curdling? Mm. I think that is curdling. They're not happy with it, they shouldn't serve it. Let's just start again. I will catch you. And it wouldn't beat the eggs so early. Teams, you're halfway through. You've got 16 minutes left. Remember, the key to pastry is not to uh, play around with it too much. Yeah, OK. I'm going to roll it as thin as I can. Right. No, 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 no. Make them down there, sort the job out. No, if you overroll it, it becomes tough. I'm going to help do this, because I want to make sure this, this is right. It looks like it's supposed to be Philip's job. Yeah, she's doing it. I've got to start thinking straight, you know. Yeah. 
I'm not just, thinking just, clearly. Just get your thoughts together. I feel it really lost it. What am I looking for? I was walking around like a zombie. Brains froze. I think exhaustion took over today. Two of us working on it together. It's better than one struggling, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah? The tarts look a little bit like they've had a bit of a rough time. Very uneven. The pastry's very, very, very overworked and it's wet. It's just melting. Philip, leave those like that for now. OK. For Catriona, chocolate mousse. Oh, well, this seems a lot better. Take two. What is she doing? I just wanted to stop stirring it. Well, this one's still causing difficulties as well. The second lot was even worse than the first. This one seems to be split up. Just, just, just about just it. Yeah. She just spent an hour making that chocolate mousse. Fortunately, Alana had had the foresight to keep the first batch. Mm. At least we've got something to put out. It's rich, isn't it? The richer and heavier, the better. I'm not talking about my men. Oh, God. Well, burnt. Still troublesome. Philip's friendly pan tart. That's one that's burnt. Got enough time to make another one? Wow. In the remaining 24 minutes. It's just not happening. It's not. I don't know why. One more time. Panicking, probably. She is like an octopus. She's all over it. Philip is kind of like her assistant. He's not doing anything. This is just a hindrance. Not much more for me to do a minute, is there? You've got to make those shards. Why don't you get on with that? Oh, yeah. I'll get on with that now. The creme brulees look like they're OK. She is doing everything. She really is a wonder woman in that kitchen. We need to get this shard going, because we've got to get this deco right, haven't we? You're not going to believe this, Anne. Well, it's all stuck, is it? It's all stuck to the paper. Stuck to the paper. Leave it. Just leave it. We should just forget those shards. Philip's gone to stand in the corner. He didn't do the shards properly, so Emma sent him to the corner. Teams, you have ten minutes remaining. We're going to do our sort of take on fine dine ish. <laughs> fine dine with massive meringues. They're just a bit rougher looking than I thought they were going to be. The pastry's it's too buttery. We can't do anything about it at this stage. No. Are you okay with that colour for that? Yeah, fab. Well yeah. done. Lilac. Oh, yeah, sweet. I don't know what they're like at the bottom, but on the top they seem quite firm. Come, Come on, teams, keep going. Come on. Come on, Phil. Keep going. Meringue does look quite chunky on the top. That's yeah. fun. That looks nice. You're not ready. We've done the best we can on that. No, you've done the best you can. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, hey, step away from your benches, please. <laughs> it's been very stressful. Yeah. Um, and it's really got to us today. You're all right. No. You've shut down. You did? Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. It'd be amazing to get to the final, wouldn't it? But it's, it's not coming easy. The judges will now taste each dish. At stake, the last remaining place in the final. When I looked at all the colours, we were happy with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We didn't get the, that pastry right, but there's other elements on that dish, I think, that are really good. But I don't know if we can beat Alana and Catriona at this point. The teams take a break as the judges dig in. First, Alana and Catriona's summer fruit pavlova, chocolate mousse and strawberry shortbread. The chocolate mousse is split, but they carried on, they persevered and they served it. The meringue is good meringue. The flavour of it is really nice. If they'd only sweetened that cream and flavoured it with vanilla, it could have made it that little bit better. Next, Emma and Philip's raspberry mousse, lemon creme brulee and frangipan tart. The raspberry mousse, I quite like the fact that it's tart, but it hasn't set. It's, a, it's a liquid. The frangipan tart. They were trying to get it out, but didn't work. Alana, Catriana, Philip and Emma, only one team can go through to the final. Philip and Emma, I thought the presentation was really pretty. It was very elegant and, and delicate. The raspberry mousse didn't set. You've got your fridge and below your fridge, Freezer. Freezer. Use the freezer. But I like the way it was tart because the creme brulee was, was sweet and your frangipan was sweet, so it was nice to have that contrast. The frangipan tart, what happened? I've heard of brain freeze, I think. It was the pastry mix. We did equal measures of, of flour and butter and just blew it. Emma, what I saw was you never for a moment gave up because you knew how much was riding on this. And I was very impressed by that. The creme brulee, the flavour's beautiful. I like the lemon through it and the vanilla and crunchy brulee on top. Just a thin layer that when you put your spoon in, it makes that beautiful crack. So I give you a seven. Thank you. I give you 
the seven. The score to beat, 14 out of 20. Alana Catriana, your chocolate mousse, it was okay. Something went wrong, but much like Philip, remember you kept on going, which is what you have to do at this level. Your summer berry pavlova, the meringue on top, it looked a little bit strange. Mm -hmm. yeah, Balancing we on knew top that, yeah. with <laughs> this huge splodge of cream. But it was nice and mallow in the centre and crisp on the outside. Way too much cream underneath. Mm. Way too much. After eating the chocolate mousse, it was just getting really heavy, girls, you know? Then I move on to the shortbread. The biscuits were cooked really well. But again, it was whipped cream with more red fruit. Do you see where I'm going? So, for your dessert, I give you five out of ten. I just would have loved to have seen you push yourself just a little bit more. So, if I give you a five. Thank okay. you. Which means, Emma, your dad's creme brulee did it. Oh. You're in the final. Well done. Well done. After today, we just thought we're going to be going home. Yeah. We've made it to the final. You! <laughs> I am not. I just didn't expect to be there. Seriously, didn't expect to be there. Katriana, Alana, we've loved having you here. You've been <laughs> so much fun and you've had so much success to get this far. I'm feeling disappointed, but actually, I think we can go home with our heads held high. Welcome to Scotland! Well, we're going to miss Alana and Katriana hugely. They're great fun, they're bubbly personalities. Slangy. 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 Awesome girls, an awesome team. Come on, come on, we can do it, we can do it. Come we on. do feel that we've achieved so much. We've won two challenges. Alana and Katriana. <laughs> I hope we've done Scotland proud. <laughs> we've had a great time. It's time for us to go. Next time, the grand final. We want you to come a faultless free course meal. Team Wales. I believe that we are superior to Danny and Kevin versus the south of England. Just go, just go. Knock him right away. We need to be confident and we're going to win it. And along the way, some twists. Only one of you will be cooking. I just felt sick. Get the baskets and the crab. And turns. Your former competitors. How are you doing, Danny? Come on, team. I think it's going to be a good fight. Yeah. To the end. To the end.